I grew up in Lahore, in uh, Pakistan, and I have to say that, you know, as we get older, you keep kind of looking back at your memories of, you know, because I'm inhabiting two different countries at this point. And I have to say I had a superb childhood, because Lahore was a very, very culturally aware city, and uh, my parents made sure that we, both myself and my brother, were very exposed to the arts. So, you know, I remember all these artistic things that we were part of. It was, we were being trained for classical singing. I was uh, training for classical dancing. You know, at that point, Lahore was very vibrant. So it was a wonderful childhood. When I entered, uh, when I came to Mount Holyoke College, which is where I got my MBA, uh, one of my majors was theater. Because they had a very strong theater department and Via that department, I ended up going to the Eugene O'Neill Center and via them going to RADA for a specialized course, yes. So actually I was on the way to being a Shakespearean actress and director <laughs> because one of the um, directors there took a keen interest in you know, the fact that I wanted to go in that direction and stuff. So there was definitely, there was a lot of training involved. It wasn't that, you know, uh, I wasn't doing it as a fly-by-night kind of operation. This was my major. Theatre was a major. It's just that on the side, on the other hand, I was also doing a major in religion. So I was a very, you know, eccentric student for Mount Holyoke. They didn't know what to make of me, like which direction she was going to end up going in. Art really, I, and I see it because I've done so many screenings across the US already with both movies. People really do get it. One, they show up because there is a very strong curiosity about Pakistan as a country. We have a lot of people showing up for these screenings. I have seen the effectiveness of creating dialogue on the community level, on the local community level. I'm not talking about being in the New York Times or being on CNN, okay? That's actually not that effective. But when I go to smaller, you know, uh, like I've gone to the Davenport area a lot, They've shown both my films and everything. And every time I'll be on the local radio, there'll be a, you know, in their main paper, they'll do an interview with me. There's incredible amounts of interest and there's incredible amounts of support. And it's very important for us to maintain that dialogue on the very grassroots local community level. The director, um, Nasser, the director of this uh, documentary. It all started through a conversation that you know a couple of us were having when the Newsweek article came out declaring Pakistan three, four years ago the most dangerous country in the world. Nasser had gone to school in Montreal and again had gone back to Pakistan to actually set up this production house. I went back to Pakistan to set up a production house and we really did it because we felt the country's media was growing and it was time to be part of that conversation. And suddenly, somewhere, you know, 10,000 miles away, somebody's declaring that this is the most dangerous country in the world. It just didn't jive, like what the ground reality of what was happening in the country at the time and what the media sensationalist kind of press was doing wasn't really the same narrative that we were seeing. So that's where Made in Pakistan kind of came up from those conversations, that we need to be in control of our own image and show that yes, there are problems in the country, but it's grey, it's not a black and white issue. It never is for any country, it's not just Pakistan actually. And to show a more human face to the society that is living there. So from that conversation is how, you know, the idea of let's follow four people and see what happens. Because then we are not, we're not creating propaganda. We are just for, it's like a, the way Made in Pakistan set up is like a reality TV show, right? You're following four people, anything can happen. We were very sure of our intent from the casting perspective um, that we wanted young working professionals because I think that's an image that is just not out there in the press anywhere in the world about Pakistan. It's always a very narrow, constrained image of bearded, you know, Taliban looking people and stuff. And they don't understand. We have a huge rising middle class in Pakistan. So that was one of the ideas. Then we wanted a balance between men and women, so which is why there's two women and two men. 
the other thing that I want to emphasize is, which I find remarkable in the last 15 years in Pakistan, is the rise of women entrepreneurs. It's remarkable. When I was growing up in Pakistan, you had three options. You could be a teacher, a doctor, or a lawyer. Or maybe an engineer also, okay, as a woman. These were like the only options open. Now I go back and what is fascinating is that every woman I know, who's, whether she's gone abroad to study or whether she's studied in Pakistan, is involved in business of some sort, which is what these two, you know, Tara is a PR agency, she started that, that's very new for Pakistan. Um, and the other one, the magazine, is incredible. It's the first free magazine for young people between the ages of 18 to 35. And it's political, it's got great articles, and they've done a great job of it. So that was the idea, to show the entrepreneurial kind of side that is arising in Pakistan from the women's side. And we really wanted something from, you know, somebody from politics, somebody young who's wanting to go into the system. And that's what, um, I forget the name of the god, I've seen it so many times, but that was the idea that we want somebody from the political establishment side. And Waleed, um, surprisingly enough, and I have to really eat my words here, I was the most nervous about. Because Waleed is a very conservative Muslim, and I didn't, and he's bearded, and I didn't want to reinforce stereotypes. However, this is where I say that I have to eat my words, because at this point, I think in the documentary, everybody has one character that they love. Art has a way of creating dialogue that I think cannot be done in any other way. It really is an incredible place to be able to exchange ideas. So I'm hoping that you know, we are always constantly fighting for the arts in this country because this is, it, it just has a way of creating dialogue between communities.